good morning dear students now we shall see stress strain relations if you consider an object under the action of several forces the object deforms deformation takes place so within this solid if you take an infinitesimal element in the form of a cube and observe its faces all the faces of the cube carry the stresses once you know these stresses the corresponding strains also you can determine right now once you know the strains also you can establish the relationship between the stresses and strains the problems are of three types one dimensional problem two dimensional problems and three dimensional problems three dimensional problem is a more generalized case right so therefore now we shall see the stress strain relations for three dimensional problems okay so now i take a solid like this assume that this is a deformable assume that it is an isotropic material so therefore the properties are same in every direction for isotropic materials the properties are same in every direction now i keep some part of the surface fixed i consider a set of forces the forces may be concentrated forces and the distributed forces like this the couples may also act under the action of these forces what happens is deformation takes place deformation takes place right when deformation takes place the associated strains you can determine once you know the associated strains you can also determine the stresses then you can establish the stresses with strains in an object like this what happens now the stress state varies from point to point point to point this is the reason why if you consider an infinitesimal element in the form of a cube in the form of a cube at the interior of this solid and isolate it and isolate then observe the stresses acting on each face of the element stresses acting on each face of the element right now let us see this is no doubt a three dimensional element a three dimensional element and these are the coordinate axes i say this is x axis this is y axis and this is z axis now i can name all the faces o a b c this is one face o c d e this is another face d e f g one more face f a b g another face 
How many vertical faces are there? Four vertical faces. How many horizontal faces are there? Two horizontal faces. And in total, six faces. In total, six faces. All these six faces carry the stresses. What are the stresses acting on these faces? Yes, we can represent. Now, face A, B, G, F, it is the visible face. Face A, B, G, F is the visible face. It is named explain. It is positive explain. So, therefore, so when you take a point on this face and draw, Right? And show the stresses acting on this phase. This is the stress sigma xx. We use sigma to denote normal stress. What first subscript indicates? The plane on which stress is acting. What is second subscript indicates? The direction of action of stress. Because A, B, G, F is the positive explain. I can understand sigma xx is the normal stress acting on positive explain in the positive direction of x-axis. Right? Now, two more stress components act on the same phase. What are the shear stresses? One shear stress acts like this in this direction and another shear stress acts like this in this direction. What are they? The first one is the shear stress acting on x plane in the positive direction of z axis and another one the shear stress acting on x plane in the positive direction of y axis. Okay. So these are the stress components acting on the phase A, B, G, F. How many phases are there? Additionally, five more phases. On those phases also you can represent the stress, the stress components acting on the phases of the cubical element. Right? Now, what are the corresponding strains? If sigma xx is the normal stress acting on x plane in the direction of x axis, the strain associated with this stress is epsilon xx. We use epsilon to denote normal strain. Therefore, how we understand this? It is the normal strain acting on x plane in the direction of x axis. Now, sigma y y. It is the normal stress acting on y plane in the direction of y axis. Then, what is the associated strain? It is noted by epsilon y y. It is the normal strain acting on y plane in the direction of y axis. Next one. Sigma zz. It is a normal stress acting on z plane in the direction of z axis. Now, what is the corresponding strain? Epsilon zz. Epsilon zz is the normal strain acting on z plane in the direction of z axis. Next. Similarly, other Stress components if you write. Next one. Tau xy, tau yz and tau zx. Okay. Right. Now, what is the strain corresponding to the shear stress tau xy? Tau xy is the shear stress acting on x plane in the direction of y axis. Tau xy is the shear stress acting on x plane in the direction of y axis. 
What, does, what is the corresponding shear strain? Gamma XY. It is the shear strain acting on X plane in the direction of Y axis. Now, and the strain corresponding to the shear stress, tau yz, what it is? It is gamma yz. Shear strain acting on y plane in the direction of z axis. Now, tau zx. What is tau zx? It is the shear stress acting on z plane in the direction of x axis. Now, what is the corresponding shear strain? Gamma zx. Right? Now, how many stress components are there? Six. In fact, you get nine. In fact, you get nine. We have to remember three more. What are they? I write you here. Yeah. The shear stress acting on Y plane in the direction of X axis. The shear stress acting on Z plane in the direction of Y axis. The shear stress acting on X plane in the direction of Z axis. What are the corresponding shear strains? They are gamma Yx, gamma Zy and gamma Xz. So how many stress components are there? Nine. How many corresponding strain components are there? Nine. However, we can reduce these stress components into only six independent stress components. The reason is, we know that shear stresses are cross. Shear stresses are cross. Therefore, you can write tau xy equals to tau yx. Tau xz equals to tau zx. So, tau yz equals to tau zy. Shear stresses are cross. Therefore, shear stress acting on x plane in the direction of y equals to shear stress acting on y plane in the direction of x. Similarly, shear stress acting on x plane in the direction of z equals to Shear stress acting on Z plane in the direction of X axis. Thirdly, shear stress acting on Y plane in the direction of Z axis equals to shear stress acting on Z plane in the direction of Y axis. This is the reason why you can reduce all these six shear stress components into three because shear stresses are cross. Therefore, how many independent stress components are there? Only six. There are only six independent stress components. What are they? Sigma x x, sigma y y, sigma z z, tau x y, tau y z, and tau z x. What are the corresponding independent she independent strains? They are. Epsilon xx, epsilon yy, epsilon zz, gamma xy, gamma yz and gamma zx. All these six independent stress components you have to relate to the corresponding strain components. How you do? We must depend on generalized hooks law. Right? We know that for all the isotropic materials, the properties are same in every direction. The properties are same in every direction. The properties are same in every direction. Therefore, from 
generalize Hutzla, we can write epsilon xx equals to from generalized Hutzla, we can write epsilon xx equals to 1 by e into sigma xx minus nu into sigma yy plus sigma z from generalized Hooke's law for isotropic materials we can write epsilon xx equals to 1 by e into sigma xx minus nu into sigma yy plus sigma z Remember, for isotropic materials, what are the elastic constants E and nu? We have one more constant, that is G, where the letter E represents a Young's modulus. The symbol nu represents a Poisson's ratio. And the third elastic constant that is G which represents shear modulus of rigidity. Shear modulus of rigidity. Right? Hence modulus, Poisson's ratio and shear modulus of rigidity. These are the properties which are same in every direction for isotropic materials. From generalized Hooke's law, we can write the expression for normal strain acting on x plane in the direction of x axis like this 1 by e into sigma xx minus nu into sigma yy plus sigma z. Generalized Hooke's law we learned in second year strength of materials course there we had learned. Therefore we have to recollect the generalized Hooke's law and write the expressions here. Okay, next one. Epsilon yy is equals to 1 by e into sigma yy minus nu into sigma xx plus sigma z. This is another expression to determine normal strain acting on y plane in the direction of y axis. Third one. Epsilon z z is equals to 1 by e into sigma z z minus nu into sigma x x plus sigma y y. This is how we can write. This is how we can write. What? For this expression is to determine normal strain acting on z plane in the direction of z axis. I told you know if you assume a cubical element, on each face of the cubical element, the stresses are acting, right? The corresponding strains we can determine depending on generalized Hooke's law. The expressions for three strains we have, right? I told you how many independent strain components are there, six. Out of six, we have the expressions for three. What are the remaining three? The remaining three are, as I told you, gamma xy, gamma yj, and gamma zx. These are the shear strains. These are the shear strains. Okay. These are the normal strains. Understand? Now, we know that within the limit of proportionality, shear stress, shear stress varies proportionately with the shear strain denoted by G. This is the reason why. Shear stress 
varies proportionately with the shear strain. Make correction. Now this is right. Within the limit of proportionality, shear stress varies proportionately with shear strain. Make correction. This is correct. This is not correct. This is wrong. Right? So when you convert this proportionality into equality, you get shear stress by shear strain equals to constant known as shear modulus of rigidity G. Right? Now we can write the expressions like this. Okay, taking these three shear strains and their corresponding shear stresses into consideration. What are they? Let us see. Tau xy divided by gamma xy which equals to shear modulus of unity g. One expression. Like this. Next one. Tau yz divided by gamma yz equals to g another expression lastly lastly tau zx divided by gamma zx which equals to g observe carefully we have the expressions for three normal strains and we also have the expressions for three shear strains gamma xy, gamma yz, and gamma zx. Okay, now we want all these six independent stress components to have relation with all six independent strain components. How do you do? I say this is equation one. This is equation 2 and this is the equation number 3. I add equation 1, 2 and 3 sum up simply. Then what you get? When you add these three, when you add these three equations, what you get? Epsilon xx plus epsilon yy plus epsilon zz which equals to, we have F, sigma xx by e here, sigma yy by e here, sigma zz by e here. Therefore, you can write sigma xx plus sigma yy plus sigma zz by e. Next, you have minus nu into sigma xx here. Minus nu into sigma xx here. So minus 2 nu sigma xx. Similarly, minus nu sigma yy here. Minus nu sigma yy here. Minus 2 nu sigma yy. And lastly, minus nu sigma zz. Minus nu sigma zz. Minus 2 nu sigma zz. Okay. So therefore, what you get here? Minus 2 nu by E into sigma xx plus sigma yy plus sigma zz. You get like this. So when you take sigma xx plus sigma yy plus sigma zz by E common, then what you get? Epsilon xx plus epsilon yy plus epsilon zz which equals to 1 minus 2 nu by e into sigma xx plus sigma yy plus sigma zz. You get like this. But what I want here, I want all the six independent stress components to have relation with their corresponding six independent strain components. Six independent strain components. So therefore I want expression for sigma xx. 
then for sigma y y, then for sigma z z, then for tau x y, then for tau y z, then for tau z x. I want six equations. In terms of, in terms of, epsilon x x, epsilon y y, epsilon z z, gamma x y, gamma y z, gamma z x. Which means that I want sigma x x in terms of epsilon x x, epsilon y y, epsilon z z, gamma x y, gamma y z, gamma z x. Similarly, sigma y y in terms of epsilon x x, epsilon y y, epsilon z z, gamma x y, gamma y z, gamma z x. Likewise, for sigma z z, tau x y, tau y z and tau z x. I want six equations. How we do? Firstly, I try for sigma x x. I want sigma x x. Then what I can do? Now, if I want the expression for sigma x x, I have to replace this sigma y y plus sigma z z. Sigma y y plus sigma z. Okay. How can I do? I come to equation 1. From equation 1, I can get sigma y y plus sigma z z. Right? Now, how oh, you get to multiply this epsilon x x by e? Then e into epsilon x x equals to so and so. Right? Then you take, you know, this sigma x x to the left side. Right? Then you divide this by minus mu. Then you determine sigma y y plus sigma z z. That you substitute here that you substitute here, then this bracket, you know, contain sigma xx terms, sigma xx terms. Then you take sigma xx common and rewrite the equation, you get the expression for sigma xx in terms of epsilon xx, epsilon yy, epsilon zz, gamma xy, gamma y z, gamma y. Next, I want the expression for Sigma y y. Then how I get? Again I take same equation. Then I replace sigma x x plus sigma z z. From where you get? Come to second equation. From second equation you can determine sigma x x plus sigma z z. That you substitute here. Then these brackets contain the terms of sigma y y, take sigma y y common and rewrite the equation for sigma y y. And thirdly, what I want? The expression for sigma z z. Again take same equation and replace this sigma x x plus sigma y y. From where do you get this sigma x x plus sigma y y? From third equation. From third equation determine sigma x x plus sigma y y. And substitute here, then you get the expression for sigma z z. If you rewrite this, how many equations we have so far? Three equations. What are the remaining three that we see? The remaining three are that we see. The remaining three are We know that tau x y by gamma x y equals to g. Fourth equation. You must rewrite this. How you let we know that g equals to 2g into 1 plus mu. From this, what is g? You can write g equals to e by 2 into 1 plus mu. You must write like this. g is the shear modulus of linearity. So, therefore, in place of g, you can write 
what you can write e by 2 into 1 plus q. Now this equation will take the form tau xy by gamma xy equals to e by 2 into 1 plus u. Similarly, you can write tau yz by gamma yz which equals to e by 2 into 1 plus nu. What is the x modulus? What is new Poisson's ratio? And last you can write tau zx by gamma zx which equals to e by 2 into 1 plus nu. This is how we get. Earlier, we tried for three expressions for sigma xx, sigma yy and sigma zz. Now we have tried for three more expressions. So tau xy, tau yz and tau zx. How we get tau xy equals to e by 2 into 1 plus nu into gamma xy. Tau yz equals to e by 2 into 1 plus nu into gamma yz. Tau zx equals e by 2 into 1 plus nu into gamma zx. Right? That we see in our slide. That we see in our slide. Stress strain relations, as I have explained, epsilon xx equals to, and here I have taken only one subscript, epsilon x. You can write epsilon xx. Epsilon x equals sigma x by e minus nu by e into sigma z plus sigma y. Epsilon y equals sigma y by e minus nu by e into sigma x plus sigma z. Epsilon z equals sigma z by e minus nu by e into sigma x plus sigma. Right? As I have explained now. As I said that shear stress by shear strain equals to shear modulus of rigidity. This is G. This is G. Shear modulus of rigidity. Make correction. Shear modulus of rigidity. Make correction. This is G. Now I get by gamma y z equals to g and tau z x by gamma z x equals to g. And we have six equations. As I said, you know, if you add these three equations, these three equations, then you get epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z equals to like this. So now I want the expression for sigma x x, therefore, I must replace sigma y plus sigma z, right? From where you get, as I told you, you get sigma z plus sigma y from this equation. Then substitute. Say so here and simplify. And simplify. Then what you get? Sigma x equal to e y 1 minus 2 nu into 1 plus nu into 1 minus nu into epsilon x plus nu into epsilon y plus nu into epsilon z. Remember carefully. Replace sigma y plus sigma z. From where you get the value of sigma y plus sigma z from first equation. That to substitute here and simplify you get like this. Again simplify you get like this. Again, you simplify, you get like this. And finally, you get an expression like this for sigma xx. If you want the expression for sigma yy, then what you have to do? Replace sigma x plus sigma z. The value of sigma x plus sigma z, you get from this equation. From this, you get sigma x plus sigma z. And substitute here, in place of sigma x plus sigma z, rewrite the expression. You get the expression for sigma y like this. E y, 1 minus 2 nu into 1 plus nu into nu into epsilon x plus 
1 minus nu into epsilon y plus nu into epsilon z. Okay. Now, if you want this expression, then what you have to do again? Come to this expression and replace sigma x plus sigma y. From where you get the value of sigma x plus sigma y? Again, come to this expression. From this determine sigma x plus sigma. Rewrite this for sigma x plus sigma y. Taking other quantities to the other side, get sigma x plus sigma y. This you substitute here in this equation. Then you get expression for sigma z. How you get? You get the expression for sigma z like this. Sigma z equals to e by 1 minus 2 nu into 1 plus nu into nu into epsilon x plus nu into epsilon y plus 1 minus nu into epsilon z. Understand? We have three equations. One for sigma x x, another for sigma y y, and third one for sigma z. And ultimately, three more expressions we get as I explain like this. Tau x y by gamma x y, I write here. Tau x y by gamma x y. Tau x y by gamma x y, which equals to e by 2 into 1 plus nu as I explained. e by 2 into 1 plus nu. But here, if you multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 minus 2 nu, 1 minus 2 nu, then you get like this. As it is here. Why you multiply numerator and denominator by 1 minus 2 nu? Because in these equations, we have in the denominator 1 minus 2 nu into 1 plus nu. So therefore, to have the same here also, I multiply 1 minus 2 nu, both the numerator and denominator. Then in the denominator, here also I get 1 minus 2 nu into 1 plus nu. Later, we understand the benefit of it. And similarly, Tau yz by gamma yz, you get like this again, e into 1 minus 2 nu by 2 into 1 minus 2 nu into 1 plus nu. And finally, the sixth expression you get, the sixth expression you get, gamma zx by tau zx. 2 into 1 minus 2 nu into 1 plus nu by e into 1 minus 2 nu. If you rewrite, you get no problem. This implies you get tau zx by gamma zx. This equals to e into 1 minus 2 nu divided by 2 into 1 minus 2 nu into 1 plus nu. You get like this if you rewrite. Okay. We have six equations, right? Now, how many independent stress components are there? Six. How many independent strain components are there? Six, right? All these six equations we can represent in matrix form. How? I write a column matrix of size six by one, having elements sigma x, sigma y, sigma z. Tau x y, tau x z, and tau x. In all six equations, e y one minus two nu into one plus nu is common. Therefore, I take it outside. Okay. So this is a column matrix of size six by one. This equals to, right? This lies outside into a matrix of unknown size into what are the Strains corresponding to these stress components, there are six strains. Therefore, I put all those six strains as a column matrix. Therefore, its size is a 6 by 1. Okay. Now, what is the size of this matrix? 6 by 6. Okay. I take first equation. Sigma xx equals to. E by 1 minus 2 nu into 1 plus nu. 
into first term I take. What is first term is 1 minus nu into epsilon xx. I put 1 minus nu here in the first row first column and what the first element of the column matrix is, it is missing here that I write. Epsilon xx, epsilon xx, I write here. Epsilon xx, it is missing here, epsilon xx. So 1 minus nu into epsilon xx plus nu into epsilon yy, this is nu. So therefore what is the second element here, epsilon yy plus nu into epsilon zz. What is the third element here, epsilon zz. This is a column matrix, it is missing here. Plus 0 into gamma xy, plus 0 into gamma yz, plus 0 into gamma zx. Therefore, I write the remaining three elements of the same column matrix, gamma xy, gamma yz, and gamma zx. What are the elements of this column matrix? Epsilon xx, epsilon yy, epsilon zz, gamma xy, gamma yz, and gamma zx. Understand? Right. What is the second equation? Sigma yy equals to, again, e by 1 minus 2 nu into 1 plus nu into, what is the first term? Nu into epsilon x is nu right here into epsilon x plus 1 minus nu into epsilon yy plus nu into epsilon z plus 0 into gamma xy plus 0 into gamma yz plus 0 into gamma third equation you take. Sigma z equals e y 1 minus 2 nu into 1 plus nu into nu into epsilon x plus nu into epsilon y y plus 1 minus nu into epsilon z z plus 0 into gamma x y plus 0 into gamma z x plus 0 into gamma z x. There are no shear strain terms therefore I put zeros. Right? And fourth equation tau x y equals to e by 1 minus 2 nu into 1 plus nu, right? You get three equations like this. They do not contain normal strain terms. So therefore here, for fourth equation, 0, 0, 0, right? You get 0.5 minus nu into gamma xy. So 0 here, 0 here. Next, tau yz equals to. The fifth equation does not contain the normal strain terms. So therefore, 0, 0, 0. And here there is no, in the same equation there is no uh, term containing gamma xy. So therefore, 0. And it contains gamma yz term. Therefore, you get here 0.5 minus nu. And here you get 0. And tau x equals to, here you get so, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.5 minus 0. So, we have a matrix here, 6 by 6. What is this matrix? E by 1 minus 2 nu into 1 plus nu into a matrix of size 6 by 6. This matrix, what is called material matrix denoted by D. Material matrix denoted by D. What is the material matrix? From here to here. This is the material matrix. E by 1 minus 2 nu to 1 plus nu into this 6. Which is denoted by D. If you want uh, all the 6 independent stress components to have relation with their corresponding 6 independent strain components. Once again I tell you, if you want all the 6 independent stress components to have relation with them, their corresponding 6 independent strain components, you must have this material matrix D. To determine this material matrix, what you want? Essentially, simply the elastic constant, Hence modulus and Poisson's ratio. If you know Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio, you can determine this material matrix D. Therefore, how 
how you can write ultimately a map a matrix denoted by sigma of psi 6 by 1 equals to a matrix d of psi 6 by 6 into a strain matrix epsilon of psi 6 by 1 how many equations are there six equations right these are the stress strain relations for three dimensional problems these are the stress strain relations for three dimensional problems when you have a three dimensional problem in your hand how do you write the stress strain relations like this if you know this material matrix and the corresponding strains yes you can determine the associated stresses okay so what we have learned in this particular class we have learned about the stress strain relations for three dimensional problems right so thank you thank you very much